All right, so we all knew this day was coming, and although it barely missed judgment on the release of season two, this week is not the case. The heavy automatic shotgun, the SA-1216, has received a nerf that may just bring it in line with other weapons. But don't worry, this patch update is not all doom and gloom, because with it, we do see a light of hope. One specifically, for the little guy. The glitch grenade has finally been buffed. This buff, in my humble opinion, will make light a staple in the meta. This, as well as an explanation from the devs about the new rank system, coming up later in this video. But before we get into that, if you found this video informative, please smash that like button. It's a small button for you, but makes a huge impact on my small channel. And also, don't forget to subscribe for all things the finals. Anyhow, I'm gonna make this patch breakdown as short as possible with all the information you need to know without any of the fluff, because I have a job to get to, and I know you guys have things you have to do as well. I left the timestamps as usual for all of you that wanna to get to the topic you're most interested in. So let's cut the bullshit and jump into it. The first topic in this update is for those of you that are interested in private matches, players will now be able to select the map that they want when starting a private match. In Power Shift, they did a solid for us fat ass heavies out there that are pretty fucked vertically if our entire team decides to choose a light sniper by adding some zip lines in Monaco and in Skyway Stadium, they added jump pads and changed some spawn points so that they are not close to the edge. So I don't fall off the map as soon as I start the game. As for maps, they did some performance and polish updates to Horizon, but the most important update here is that they moved the spawn location in the corner of Monaco near the hotels that led to spawn trapping. This is gray and all, but I hope they adjust other spawn trap locations in Skyway Stadium as well as Las Vegas. These locations are especially egregious when it gets to the final round and the enemy team lays mines and traps to completely decimate you within the first few seconds of spawning. Now, on to weapons and gadgets. They fixed an issue where there was inconsistent damage when multiple explosives were triggered at the same time by using either C4 or breach charges, as opposed to multiplied melee damage. I'll be honest, they had me at the first half, but I don't know what the fuck multiplied melee damage means. If you do, let me know in the comments down below. Next is an important one though. They fixed an issue that made recoil on burst weapons not behave as intended. So maybe this might be a direct buff to the FAMAS and the 93R. I'll be honest with you though, I took them out in the firing range and I didn't really see much of a difference. But the this may be a completely different story when in a live engagement, so we'll have to wait and see. Also, I don't know if the automatic shotgun for the heavy counts as a burst weapon, but if it does, that might be a buff to it as well. They fixed gateway ammo not being properly refunded when being thrown at an APS turret, fix hovering objects after transmutation, as well as block transmutation on friendly carryables. Let's be honest here though. Who actually here is using Data Reshaper? They improve zipline behavior so you don't fly off the map or dry hump the side of a building when trying to get to where you want to go. The last two here though are pretty important to note. For the dematerializer, you have improvements when trying to dematerialize or rematerialize objects when multiple objects are close together. So hopefully when you dematerialize a floor or a wall, you remove it entirely rather than having a support beam block your way or another layer to the floor. And last but certainly not least, they remove the shitter ability to exploit and use the mesh shield during a defib revive. Anyhow, moving past art, the UI, and audio updates, because I don't see anything of importance that will affect your performance in-game. So we finally make our way to the weapon and balance updates, and what you've all been waiting for, the heavy automatic shotgun SA-1216 received a decrease in fire rate from 230 to 200 RPM, and a decrease in damage per pellet from 7 to 6. Now, I gotta be honest with you, after testing this myself, I don't really see much of a difference. I might even go with as far as to say that the nerf to the fire rate made controlling the burst while holding down the left click a little easier. When prior to this patch, I would have to click every time I wanted to fire to manage the recoil. So is it still viable? Yeah, definitely. But is it finally brought in line with other weapons? In my humble opinion, as of right now, no. But hey, this might give other weapons a chance to shine. We'll just have to wait and see. The next we have changes for gadgets and this one, this one here is a game changer. Glitch grenades, as well as glitch traps, will explode upon impact when they hit a mesh or dome shield. However, the grenades will still bounce off any other surface. Now this is a game changer right here. It will make light a top meta pick, mark my words, with their speed, maneuverability, and evasiveness, hitting a heavy team abusing mesh and dome shields, deactivating the abilities for entire teams will be easier than it's ever been. So I never thought I'd say this. If you want to drastically increase your chances of winning against butt-hugging teams, medium circle jerking each other with heals, and stopping last minute steals, make sure there is a light on your team. And lastly, 
we have improvements to cheat prevention and detection, as well as an added ban progression with a three strike system. Hopefully this does something for the resurgence of cheaters because ranked is severely hurting right now. Speaking of ranked, Oscar from Embark just released a video explaining our rank system, or at least trying to, saying that they realized that something needed to change with ranked from last season and that they removed some parts, added some new, twisted around and gave it a reach around, ending up with a new system that they firmly believe is better than the old one over time. He explains how the eight placement rounds are going to determine your starting ranked, and the majority of us, no matter how good we are, will end up between bronze and gold. For my team and I, we won all eight of our matches and ended up at gold two, which I assume is the highest rank you can get from the placement matches. He also states if you end up ranking up to platinum from gold, you can still demote if you lose a lot of your matches. And no, you won't instantly demote if you hit that threshold, because he does also still there is some sort of loss prevention in the system, but doesn't go into further detail. Again, with everything else here, it's very vague. In this rank system, there is no such thing as rank decay, so essentially you could stop playing rank for a very long time, come back, and start where you left off. The rewards you get this season will be based off the highest rank achieved. So for instance, if you get to platinum, then somehow demote all the way to silver, you'll still get the platinum reward. They said they tightened up the matchmaking at the cost of longer queue times. I'm currently in platinum right now, and I've seen a lot of improvements with the random teammates I get when solo or duo queuing. However, However, there will be times when I see bronze players as well as silver players pop up in my lobbies here and there. This may be because some players decided to group up with a high gold or platinum player, putting them in high gold and platinum lobbies. So then he goes on to say that they removed fame points and there is no way to tell how you were doing, which is why currently they're working on implementing a system that will let you know if you are closer to your rank goal or farther away from your rank goal. But for now, the thing that determines whether or not you progress is essentially how far you get into a tournament. So if you make it further into a tournament, you're you're going to gain more rank. If you lose earlier, you're going to gain less rank. Now, I do appreciate the devs communicating with us and providing this video to give us more insight, but I'll be honest, this is all very vague. And in my opinion, this lack of progression transparency is quite shit. For instance, one of my teammates decided to play two tourneys on his own. At the time, he was gold two, and in both those tourneys, he lost on the second round. So by all accounts, he should have not been in the negative. Ever since then, we've played every tournament together, and after a couple of wins, my third teammate and I got into platinum and he was still stuck in gold one. Now at the time we just assumed that this happened because he played those two tournaments without us, but after a couple third and final round knockouts, he is still in gold one, which is baffling to me. So either there is some sort of hidden metric besides getting far in a tournament, or you need to actually win an entire tournament in order to proceed to the next rank. Now this is fine and all, and I don't mind this sort of change, but at least give us some sort of metric so we can set goals as well as realistic expectations every time we play. Because without knowing how much is gained or received, you lose a sense of progression and motivation, feeling helpless and not knowing what you can do to improve or strive for in order to get to the next rank. Because let's just be honest here, out of all the skins in the rank rewards, the diamond skin is one we all want. And if players feel like it's impossible to set goals to get there, they will stop playing ranked and quite possibly stop playing the game entirely. I'm not saying this to hate on the devs, because I know they are passionate about their game and they are doing everything they possibly can to cater to everyone in their player base. From pros all the way to the guy coming back home after a 9 to 5. Which is a huge reason why I love this game. However, this rank system, as of now, is just just not the play. The damage that it can cause can be irreversible in terms of player retention and needs to be fixed as soon as possible. With that being said though, I'm honestly enjoying every other aspect of the game and think it is a huge step up from last season. For the rest of the video, I'm going to be showing you guys the store update as well as the new FCAR skin and how it looks in game. And in my opinion, it's actually pretty cool. Stick around if you want to see that. So anyhow guys, that's about all there is for today. Let me know what you guys think about the heavy shotgun nerf, the new rank system, or if some of you are going to possibly play light today. As usual though, if you guys found this video informative, please smash that like button. It's a small button for you, but again, means the world to me. And also, subscribe for all things to finals. I'll see you guys next time. Peace and love.